Closed captioning for sport fishing on the fly is brought to you by The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. Hey everyone, welcome to Sport Fishing on the Fly. Well today I'm going to take the reins of the camera because we have Brian Chan joining us today. And Brian and Don are going to take into one of the many lakes there are around Kamloops. And it's a lake that Brian hasn't been to for a while, so it's going to be interesting to see how these guys approach the lake. So that's what we're going to be doing is watching Brian and Don's approach to a lake. And that's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, G. Loomis Rods, and High Drift Boats. We'll get the boat ready. Excellent. We're here. Nice little lamp. Oh, looks like an interesting little lake. Yeah, it's just one of the many small lakes the society stocks in the Cowlitz area. I haven't fished it for years, but it's, you know, perfect time, middle of June, there should be all kinds of bugs, caddis, damsels, maybe. Well, a lot of times when we come to a lake like this, first things that I check out specifically is the shoreline. Like I see there's a lot of lily pads, a lot of weed growth, always a sign of good damsel fishing. Absolutely. Chronomids, always on the agenda. What else would we look for in a little lake like this? Well, certainly it's, there'll be some caddis here as well. And we'll probably catch the tail end of mayflies just because of the timing, middle of June, and they're pro probably starting to thin out, but there might be a few you still around. And I can see damsels flying, so. Oh, for sure. And the most exciting thing about it is a lot of people ignore the caddis. I know, especially in these lakes up in Camel's area, you get the big sedge coming yep. off, big nymphs down below. One thing you can't ignore are the caddis. I mean, that is, it can be very exciting fishing. Well, that's sometimes what really rings the dinner bell for the day. And come middle of June, that's when it really it's, starts to It's that. prime time, yeah. So anything else we're looking at? I know this is a shoal area. A lot of people want to know when we get to a lake, are there shoals, are there certain areas, is it deep in certain areas, are there natural springs in the lake? Yeah, on this particular, this is a small body of water, but it's got a, a large percentage of it is shoal, and there is some small spring areas as well, but that's why we bring the depth sounder, just to make sure we can find it. <laughs> Critical tool. Absolutely. Of course, we have our throat sampler, we have our rods, got our reels, got the really good flies. Got lunch. Got lunch, <laughs> Granny's gonna be happy. We're ready to go, everything's good. Well, we we'll launch the boat and yeah, we'll let's, get let's get at her. Look at all those. What are those? Tadpole. Bullfrog tadpole. Bullfrog, look at the size of them. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna get big. Is that feet? Rarely. You know, the odd time you hear stories of someone catching fish and they kill it and clean it and have tadpoles in it. Yeah. But tadpoles have a uh, this tasteful uh, mucus on their outer skin, and, and that turns the fish off in a lot of cases. Well, there you go. So that's why we don't have any tadpole in the That's why you don't see it. <laughs> bass know. would be different. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh, bass would like them, wouldn't oh, they? Oh, yeah, they'd love them. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm wondering those things too, Bryce. Those are coming out here. It's all kiddo It's this big, solid terra shoal, which is from the best habitat for bugs, shrimp, scuds. You know, our favorite. Yeah, and it's also not that deep. No, and so it's perfect. Lots of sunlight penetration. Yeah. So there's another fish right, right here. Off. Like, we don't have to go far. So really, essentially, we've seen a lot of the keys. We saw the damsels moving. We see fish in the shallows. Before we even got on the water. Yeah, we so don't have to go far. Just takes 
it all takes is a couple minutes of a servant and you can put two and two together and really shorten the learning curve. You know, the day. big thing, a lot of people, though, they'll come out here and they don't see the fish moving. Like, yeah. then they get confused. Where do I go? Where do I yeah. target? It sure helps to see the odd fish move. Yeah. Because we saw them move here and then further out in the lake, but I think we should start here. In the last five minutes, there's been four fish, four fish move right here. Yeah. Well, good place to start. We'll put on some, some maybe some damsels, intermediate, clear intermediate yeah. set line. Or a floater, a damsel man. Uh, so, and your favorite, little indicator? Yeah, we might. Let's <laughs> see how it goes. Bow anchor down. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm using 5x floral because because just because the water's clear, and I'm putting on. I'm going to put the old reliable on. What's up? Black and red. Black and red? Yeah. Just just because I think they still might be having a a looky loo at them, and I'm just going to. I'll just, I'm going to hang it off a loop knot. We're in the water. You fishing already? I'm fishing. Jeez, I'm surprised that you have an indicator on, right? Oh, <laughs> was on there from the last time. <laughs> You know, I would have never called that one. Look at that. Now they got it right. Oh, putting on the dance one. Oh, oh like fish on already. Fish on. <laughs> Holy cow. Now that could be, oh, that could be, oh. Oh, and that's That could jumper. be good luck or bad luck. Oh, yeah. Cat, fish on the first cat. Still rigging up. Oh, Boy, chunky little fish, dude. Well, that's a nice size. It's perfect for and that's what we're expecting to catch all day, right? Yeah, because it, it, this this little lake is winter killed um, two years ago, two winters ago. So the fish that we're catching today have been in, were stocked in the spring of last spring, and now they're just approaching two years old. Oh, there you go. Oh, nice. Should we see what? Uh, yeah, let's uh, have a quick look. Sure. You never know. So well, it's worth checking. I mean, they are cruising through here. We've talked about dazzles, we talked a little bit about caddis, we talked about chronomids, you know, the, there it comes out. Basic ingredients they're going to be fishing on, so, and again, it, this is very important to make sure we do this correctly. Yeah, so, we'll just put, put the right in the water. Sure. I'm just going to wet, wet the pump, get the insides wet, yeah. and get all the water out, and then just gently slide it into the narrowing, yeah. and then get suction, and pull it out. That's it. That's I mean, a pretty little fish. That's a pretty little rainbow. Yeah. Very nice. Oh. <laughs> there he goes. Goes back over here. Oh, isn't that interesting? Two water boatmen. Wow. And zooplankton. <laughs> little zooplankton bobbing around there. Look at that. A couple water boatmen. A couple water boatmen. Hey, I may have, I haven't even put a fly on yet. I may have to put a water boatman on. No, eat a chronomid. That's all you need to know. That's true. You yeah. did eat it. They still have it in their memory. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I oh. fish on. There's a fish. Oh, oh. a jumper. Oh. The big air time. Gee, Brian, guess what that was on? Oh. First cast with the water bowl. There you go. Oh, look at the air. <laughs> And that was from, whoa, and that was from the throat sample. Yep. Well, what does that show us? You know, you take a throat sample. We saw the, uh, I was going to put on a damsel. Once we took the throat sample, I saw he'd eaten a couple water bowmen. So guess what? Put on a water bowman, first cast, bam. <laughs> he didn't like it. He didn't like it. There it is. Bowman's out. <laughs> oh, yeah, you want to tangle my line? Oh, huh? it might be tangled. <laughs> Show everybody the little little guy. That's what we're fishing today. That size right there. What is that? Like pound and a half. Pound and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some bigger ones. 
But the nice thing is the big air time. You know, these fish are just loving it. Oh, they're active. They're active, they're eating. Nothing better. So much more fun. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now you look at Look at Brian. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. He brings it in all snuggled up. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> Oh, that's a bigger fish. Okay. Bigger fish. Okay. <laughs> Second cast with the water boatman. Yeah. Boy, boy, this, boy, this guy's a little better fish. <laughs> You're a little bit bigger. I'm all snarled up now. Got just some line on you. I quickly want to go through a recommended setup here. Since we are not fishing for any bigger fish than probably two pounds, Brian thinks the max in here will be about two pounds. I've got a four weight rod, a nice green dance four weight. Again, lake, lake tip, it's, uh, you're saying the water's really clear? Yeah, it's, it's good, good and clear. tend to be maybe leader shy, so again, four X, five X tippets, you know, five, four pound, five pound yeah. test. Perfect. Probably fine. Fluorocarbon works really well. Oh. You made me miss one. <laughs> And I think that's the key. Again, I'm using a clear intermediate sink because I want my water boatman just to, to gently go under and, and bob back up. It seems to be working well. Very shallow water, so the clear intermediate sink, we only get it down a few feet. Works really ideal in here. And of course, Brian, with the bobber. <laughs> it's working oh, just, real well. Just for a couple fish. Hell yeah. yeah. Got to see it go down. You've got to start that way. You always start that way, though, don't you? I do. You do. It's just it's traditional. I think you nice That is. He's been, he's been scrapping real nice. So they're in here looking, definitely, and I mean, I don't know, I, I imagine with a damsel would probably do the same thing, give something some motion, yeah. but they're sure eating that bowman right now. Yeah, and you know, the other thing is, you know, we were coming off of two weeks of really rotten weather, and we finally got some stable pressure. There's some heat today, and I think yeah. it's making the fish happy. They're definitely happy, yeah. which is making us happy. That's right. Well, let's let this guy go. That's a pretty fish. That is. That size. Got the water bowman right in the corner of his mouth here. There, pop it out. This is a real nice guy. Always wet your hands, too. There he is. Beautiful. Isn't that nice? How long is that? That guy's pretty long, actually. 16 inches. Yeah. But there you go. Pretty coloration. Oh, a beautiful fish. Look at the back, too. That green color. There it goes. Beautiful. What a start. What an absolute great start. Two casts. What are you? you took a cast, I took two more, a couple of fish. And then you took so long on that fish, I missed one. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we come back, I think we'll go through some more techniques. Maybe uh, we'll slide to some different areas, yeah. maybe try some in the reef. But we have all day to experiment. Absolutely. And that's the beauty. Just got going. Excellent. Stay tuned. Be right back. when you're fishing the, the Bowman's is you want that Bowman to come down. It actually, it's on a floating pattern, so it floats up. So you want to pull it a few times, let it float back up. Pull some more, let it float back up. And that's all I'm doing. A few little short pulls and let it sit, float back up. A few more short pulls and let it float back up. It seems to work well, especially on this, uh, let's go cool. this carol weed. You hit it right there. And no. it the boat. You're going to make me do this. It must be following it. You're going to make me put one on. <laughs> I'm going to make you put a boat on. Stretch out that line. He was pulling it, pulling it, and just feel it tighten up. Whoa. Oh, you know what I've noticed too? You're getting bigger. Is every time <laughs> I start. Oh, oh, double handle. <laughs> Every time I see oh, it, oh, oh, that's a bigger fish, too. It was three feet in the air. Holy cow. You know, as I was saying, oh, every time they are kidding. every time that I started pulling that a little quicker, yeah. do, 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 and then they were grabbing it, and I could feel them chasing it. It's almost like they're chasing it, and finally, they just eat it. Every time I'd pull it quicker, like it's getting away, let me go underneath your rod. They'd grab it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good growth. Fine, yeah. Lots of water. Get it. Mine fell off. Oh, I hear his gun button. Mine. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I think that was. Oh, this guy's 
about a minute. So I got a ton of fun. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're hot. hot. They are hot fish. Big air time. I'm talking. That's three feet in the air, some of those jumps. Oh, cow. There we go. <laughs> you hit it right on the top. <laughs> right on the top. Excellent. Well, you know what we're going to do, too? Since this pattern is working so good, yeah. guess what? We're going to go to the bench. Brent Schlinker tied us up a real nice pattern earlier this year. Great. Nice water boat with pattern, so let's go to the bench and tie you one up. Sounds like good. a great idea. There's a lot of great water boatman patterns out there and Brent has his own special tie. So coming up is Brent's water boatman. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're gonna use a dry fly, size 10 to 12. We'll tie with some six aught brown thread. For the shell back, we use some thin skin molted oak, some pearl crystal flash for the underbelly, some hare's ear crystal dub for the body, and some goose bites for the legs. I like to use a, just a dry fly hook so it operates in the water, just a little more movement involved there. We're going to dress the hook shank again here like we did before. All our flies. Do a little underbody. I'll use some pearl crystal flashes just to imitate the bubble that the uh, water boatman goes to the surface. So you swim the surface, grab a little water or bubble of air I should say and uh, then they swim back down. This thin skin comes on a cardboard strip we just cut it in, uh, this will be about a one-eighth size strip. I'm cutting it off here, just peel the thin skin, and there will be a shiny side and a dull side. We want to tie it dull side up for now, and this will get pulled over for the top of the shell back. Now I'll just throw my half hitch there to keep my thread at the back of the fly. We're just going to dub, we're going to use our crystal dub hairs here. Now you see here by spinning that I can keep that quite buggy which also grabs a little bit of natural air. I'm going to dub the back part of this fly just a little bit thicker. We're going to go about halfway and then we'll tie on our legs. So we'll just grab our goose bites here and take a couple off. They have a natural curve to them as you can see there. I'm going to lay the curved side out and the tip will be to the end of the bend and I'll tie one on each side. We'll wrap it down very firmly. So I don't like to dub the whole body because the legs will pull out. And I'll lay one on this side to me and tie it on as well. Then I'll trim the butts of the uh, goose pilots off here. Throw another half hitch on there and dub the front part of the fly, the front part of the body, and that won't be quite as thick as the rear. I want to get a little bit of a shape to it, and we'll go forward. Now we'll pull our underbody forward with our pearl crystal flash. I'm going to get a few turns here to secure it down. Now I won't cut that off at this point because it could pull out. So what I do is pull back on my crystal flash back over itself and tie back over itself once more. So that'll be a lot more secure. So all we do now is we pull our thin skin, this mottled oak, it's got a natural color, looks very much like a natural, over the top, and that is the shiny side, is what you're going to see now of that thin skin. That'll be secured there. Put a large thread head on there. And we'll finish that off. So there's our uh, Brent's Boatman. You see the pearl underneath imitates the air bubble that they grab. The little goose bites will imitate the legs. And of course, the shiny shell back of a boatman. Yeah, right. Hey. Give me another bit. Black and red. Funny thing is, it's been uh, seen about a half an hour. It just it started off so good and then she just they quit jumping. So we had to change up. I mean that's a big thing too is when you go through a period you have some good action and when it slows up for a half an hour or even 15 minutes, yep. change it up. Try something new. You have to. 
You got if you don't, you're going to sit there and you're going to flog around for another couple hours and not catch any fish. So what did you do, Brian? You changed it up and went to a chrony again? Yeah, put, took the boatman off and put the chronoman back on. And if we get this guy in, we should probably do another throat sample. Yeah, good point. Because we should always, you know, if it is slow, we don't know what they're eating now. Obviously, they are still eating a bit because they eat your condiment. Maybe they change over to condiment. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the cool thing about fishing in a lake is the fish will transition through the day. Absolutely. You know, they'll sit there and they might feed for an hour on one thing and then they'll change right over to something else for an hour and then go off the bite for a couple hours. So yeah. if you're not catching fish, sit back and relax. Have something to eat like Granny always does. <laughs> gotta have food in the boat. <laughs> yeah, it's like you. You're gonna be the same way, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Always gotta have something to eat. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Now, we got a throw sample from this guy. What a chunk. Nice, meaty little fish. Now, like I said earlier, you know, it's just fun to go out and catch fish this size. Absolutely. You, know, you don't have to be going after the lunkers. You just gotta go out and have fun. Fucks out. Ooh, the only black and red, eh? Yeah. Saw that. That would be Brian's favorite, the black and red. The go-to. <laughs> so, bigger fish, calms them down, you hold them upside down. Yeah. Put in the water, press the pump, into the throat. Ooh, something in there. Yes. Oh, that's a nice healthy fish. That's perfect. Perfect yeah. size to go out and catch a bunch and have fun. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. Yeah. There you go, it swings away. Nice! What the heck? Oh, it's going there. See what you had in the throat. So we'll have a quick look. Holy cow! You're still eating boatmen. Look at so that. There's three boatmen and oh, a one mayfly. One mayfly. Oh, that's an, Is there? Oh, actually, there's two mays in there. Ah, okay. Yeah. So a mayfly could be a good choice. I think still we might get a mayfly. Emerges this afternoon. And obviously, he's st they're still eating boatmen. Yeah, boatmen yeah. cruising around. You know, I changed over, and also the size of the boatmen I think is important. Like, those are pretty small. They've gotten smaller. Yeah. Those first ones we pumped this morning were big. We're big. Yeah, but these are little guys. Well, thanks for the day, Bri. That was great, Don. Yeah, it's always a pleasure, isn't it? Going out, filming a little bit, doing a little fishing. Yeah, we saw lots today and kind of figured the puzzle out. Well, that was a neat thing. You know, the, the throat sample, again, was a very key ingredient because we wouldn't have, I would have never thought to try a boatman unless we would have got some in a sample. Absolutely, and it, you know, through the day, they ate them for a while and then they'd go off them and then they'd come back on. So. What really surprised me, though, is why you uh, went with the Karatamin for a change. I just can't. <laughs> I can't cannot start the day without it. You've got every rod you had in your bag that you pulled out, had the little bobber on it, and had the Karatamin. And you know what? It's, it's always good. Every time we well, come over, yeah, we'll catch fish. First cast, and you know, they died down when they started to go on the boatman heavily, but in the end, they came back onto it. Yeah, great job of the fisheries management. When you come on the wild, take care, conserve our waters, and we'll see you next time when you take a sport fishing on the fly. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.